Hey, welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to solve a, an equation, a trigonometric equation. Now, when we look at it, we have two terms, and it's set equal to zero, so we use that same technique where we're going to try to factor, and then whenever we have a factor, um, or I should say whenever we have a product, when you multiply two things together, it's set equal to zero, then that means that each of the factors is equal to zero. All right, so here we can see that we can factor out the tangent of theta. So the tangent of theta is removed and now we have what's left over three times the sine of theta minus two equals zero so now we can see that we have a product of the tangent of theta multiplied times that's what's inside the parentheses three times the sine of theta minus two if two if a product if two things multiplied together is equal to zero that means either one or the other is equal to zero so we can say that the tangent of theta is equal to zero or three times the sine of theta minus 2 is equal to 0, and then we solve those two equations separately. All right, the tangent of theta equals 0. If you remember what the tangent of theta looks like when we graph it, it looks like this. So you can see there's only one place where the tangent of theta is equal to 0, and of course that's with the limits between minus pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So that means that there's only one place that's where the angle is 0. Remember that the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine, Right, so you can think of it this way, the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta equals zero. So that can only happen if the numerator is zero, which means the numerator, the sine, can be zero when theta is zero, just like for the tangent of theta is equal to zero. So the conclusion is theta equals zero is the only place where the tangent of theta can equal zero, of course, between minus pi over two and positive pi over two. Now let's go to the second equation. Let's move the negative 2 across, so we have 3 times the sine of theta equals positive 2, and then we divide both sides by 3, we get the sine of theta is equal to 2 divided by 3, which is a number between 1 and negative 1, so we know there is a solution for that. So if we draw the unit circle, notice there is two places where the sine of theta can be a number between 0 and 1, a positive number, and 2 thirds is right about here somewhere, so we can say that that's the point, and there's a second point where the sine of theta can be zero, which means it corresponds to an angle theta sub one there, and the angle here, theta sub two there. So there's two angles for which the sine of the angle can equal two thirds. Now, we probably need a calculator to figure out what that angle is. So two divided by three, take the sine of that, and it's, well, let me convert my calculator to degrees. That's probably a little bit better to work with. So mode 4 equals, so let's try it again. So 2 divided by 3 equals, take the sine of that, and I get, I should take the inverse sine. 2 divided by 3 equals, take the inverse sine, and we get 41.8 degrees. So theta is equal to 41.8 degrees. Of course, that would be the first angle right here. To get the second angle, it would be 180 degrees minus 41.8. So that would be 180 minus 41.8 gives us theta sub 2. So theta sub 1, theta sub 2 is equal to 180 degrees minus 41.8 degrees, whatever that happens to be. So minus plus 180. And so we get 138 degrees or 138.2 degrees. So for those two values of theta, the equation will be zero, and also for theta equals zero, the equation will be zero. So there's actually three solutions, one, two, and three, all satisfy this particular equation. And that's how we do that.